Mic test, mic test, one, two, three. Three, two, one, go. So the year is 2023 in the month of April, and Israel is at it again. It's amazing to see the footages that's coming out of southern Israel today. And then I was amazed by the reaction of the general public as far as what's being portrayed in the media and people taking sides. I made a video not so, maybe it has been a while because I've been very inconsistent on YouTube. Um, so I made a video a year or so ago about the Israel-Palestine situation and whose side that God is on. In that video, I said what the scripture says. He's not on anyone's side. He's on his own side. Just as when Joshua was scavenging the land of uh, Jericho and he ran into the angel of the Lord and he asked him, whose side are you on? And the angel of the Lord said, neither. But rather, I'm a commander of the army of the Lord. And then Joshua bowed down in worship. This was a theophany. Christophany of the pre-incarnate Christ. But here we have it, and we go again. I think when one takes sides, right, um, it's amazing how in this day and age, people are so polarized in their responses to things, including this conflict between Israel and Palestine. Me, myself, and I, I am on the side of truth. And as the old adage goes, when it comes to war, truth is the first casualty. I think in these times, in these last days, in this final hour, as the scripture describes it, it's very important to have a high biblical IQ. That way you have the perfect lens in how to see and interpret the world around you. So I've been reading um, through the Bible, Joshua, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, previously Judges. And the theme I see in the land of Israel is war. Always war, even during the days of the Judges. There's always somebody to fight. And when I saw the images of the terrorists capturing that woman and dragging her into that Jeep as a captive, it's amazing how after all these years, still bloodshed in the land of Canaan. So we have two sides. We have Palestine and we have Israel. But before I analyze this, we have the perfect worldview. The perfect worldview is God's worldview, the way of seeing the world. And it's so common for Christians to engage in Israel worship because they say and preach that Israel is the chosen people of God, which is correct. But it would be so much more effective if the sentence was completed. Israel is chosen, but chosen for what? I propose to you that they were chosen to be blessed by God and to be the salt of the earth. For it was to them, as it says in Romans, was revealed the oracles of God, the prophets and the law. But Israel have rejected their Messiah. But God is not done with Israel, for in the end, the remnant will be saved. God is not done with the nation of Israel. Beyond Israel worship, we need to have a biblical mindset on how to view things. Just because you are the chosen people of God to be the salt of the earth, does not mean that one should not use their dome in analyzing the injustices perpetrated by 
a, you could say, a secular government. But with that being said, it doesn't justify the heinous, barbaric, cowardly act of Hamas in attacking, murdering innocent civilians. I just don't get it. How can an organization infiltrate a country? Now, we have the Gaza Strip, which is in southern Israel. There is no occupation in the Gaza Strip. Them folks have their own sovereign country. They receive aid from Iran. They have the support of Hezbollah out of Lebanon. Um, But instead of using that aid to better the economy, to bring in jobs, Hamas, who is the governing um, party in that region, uses the aid to build tunnels, purchase missiles, and attack Israel. I pity the civilians of that nation who are occupied. You you talk about occupation? Occupied by a terrorist organization. So there is no occupation of Israel in southern Israel in terms of the sovereignty of uh, the Gaza Strip. So you got these people that invade land, air, and sea randomly executing people, shooting a baby in the head, killing a woman and parading her body naked in the streets. And in response, you have rallies in New York, in San Francisco, in the Netherlands, saying free Palestine. How about free the hostages? How about standing for what's right? And that's where I stand, for morality, and for justice. It is unjust to engage in arms, in conflict, with civilians who are just living their lives. Albeit civilians may benefit from the policies of their government, but they are not their government. Hamas, among many other Muslim terrorist organizations, are a manifestation of evil. But with that being said, what the Palestinians and the Israelis, I can't help but think about First John. First John 2 2, where he says, He himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the world. Christ came that he may save sinners. You know, sometimes I wonder, I wonder how Jesus would respond to some of these current events if he was still walking the earth. And knowing the scriptures, I believe that he would point to eternal matters, such as, um, should we pay taxes to Caesar? Bring me a denarius whose image is on this coin. Caesar's, well, give to Caesar's what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So with this land dispute, I can only surmise that the Christ would say something along whoever inherits this land shall not keep it forever. Whoever inherits the land that I will give will be his for eternity. Which reminds me of the woman of the well, right? Give me the drink. And he goes on to say, whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. Whoever drinks of the water that I give shall never thirst again. So Christ is always pointing towards eternal matters. Things that will matter a billion years from now. It is pitiful and sad that people are dying over land that they themselves will not inherit eternally. The scripture says the meek shall inherit the earth. And those who are meek are those who have come to believe and trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Keep the land. If anything, it's my land. Because in Romans, it says that real Jews are spiritual Jews, and they are the ones who are the seed and descendant of Abraham. They are of Abraham's seed. Circumcision of the heart. 
rather of the flesh. But I don't need to go out there and fight for land. I'll let Jesus take care of that when he comes back because of an eternal perspective, you see. But with all that being said, God still has a plan for national Israel. And I support and I surrender to the will of God as far as what his word says. But all these things he will bring to pass in his time. So you have two secular governments. Two secular governments shedding blood. Why? Because of their lack of understanding of who Jesus is. The Muslim says that the Christ was just a prophet. The Jews say the Christ was just a false believer, or rather a, um, a false Jew who led people astray and started his own religion. To an essence, a false believer as you compare it to uh, the ancient practice of Judaism, according to their worldview. So we have it here. That salvation is of the Jews. The Jews are the chosen people of God, chosen to be the salt of the earth, chosen to be blessed by God. Blessings and curses what he gave them. God has no covenant with anyone except the Jews. But that's a blessing to all of us Gentiles because of that covenant. The covenant has a disclaimer in there that brings in the Gentiles in 1 John 2, 2, where it says that he did not just die for our sins, but also the world's. He died for the sins of the Palestinians. Isn't that crazy? He died for the sins of my Zos, the Haitians, the Americans, the people from France, the Frenchmen, the African. He died for the sins of the whole world. And that is the chief and important thing. And in understanding that, it gives you a clearer picture of what it's all about. But because the God of this world, Satan, has blinded these people's eyes, they're fighting over temporal things, superficial things. There's a spiritual war going on in the heavenlies that are enticing these people's minds to go after one another. And it's shameful. I'm still appalled by what Hamas did. And what Hamas does to innocent civilians. There is a disregard for human life, even by the Israeli government, because they are willing to kill a hundred Palestinian civilians if they could kill one terrorist. At least that's the impression I get. They get new toys from America and they can't wait to try it. Very, very sad indeed.